This is Catherine. I'm here with Katie from Dilly Dally. Tonight's the first night of the Heaven headlining tour for you guys. What does it mean to be a, to be doing a headlining tour again? It's been a while. Um, this is so like the first tour we ever did was in 2015 when we put out our first record um, in America and Canada, and we haven't toured since then like out in this like neck of the woods um as a headline we've done a couple support tours and a co-headline tour and we've done some festivals but like this is the first big this is the biggest headline tour we've ever done in canada and u.s yeah how does that uh change how you prepared for the tour um i don't know just overall we're like more like warmed up on these songs because we've toured them uh the the new record um a couple times now so or a few times i guess so yeah we're just we're just all like warm and juicy with these this new material it just like rolls off the tongue do you feel different playing these new songs um as opposed to on the the 2015 tour I mean the songs are really different which we can talk about later but do you find that it's different to perform them or play them um and the reception that you get from the audience um I mean like these songs are less um aggressive and they're more introverted in a way so I find like it took me a bit longer with these songs to really come out of my shell on stage and bring the audience into it like in a more physical way I guess like um just because yeah we're used like the older material or is just like faster more faster songs that we like very much wrote to play on stage in like small venues and for this album it was more about like what would be cool on a record and translating those songs live has been like a lot luckily a lot less challenging than I expected and um it's just it's really beautiful yeah apparently like you know there's some tears out there in the audience and um we still play a lot of the old fast songs too and have those moments so it's a really nice mix how is the songwriting process different for this album um, I mean, we all were like kind of dispersed at the beginning of the writing process, um, because everyone was so burnt out from touring the first record and like just needed space. So, um, I like very much like kind of wrote a lot of, um, material by myself and then, by the time the whole band was ready to like get in the, a room together again and and turn these songs into Dilly Dally songs, um, we only had so much time before the studio. So I think we still ended up writing some shit in the studio. Um, uh, like Soar, our first record was recorded in 11 days and Heaven was recorded in like two and a half months or something. So it was definitely like a lot more like layers and experimenting so you said that you guys were really burnt out after touring and um i read the band wasn't totally sure that they were going to continue as a band so the idea of writing this as being more therapeutic than sore did it sort of change your relationship with music in general honestly like i would say sore was just as therapeutic to write i got a lot of stuff off my chest during that time about like just like being angry about um, uh, misogyny in, and like just kind of very much like around that time was discovering like my um, feminist voice, I guess. So that was just as therapeutic to get really angry and yell at everybody on stage and um, – and, you know, yell at everybody over a bunch of fun songs. And um, and then for Heaven, then it was therapeutic in the sense that I was done being angry and I was very much more depressed about um, 
just like the feeling that like wow like our dreams finally came true but all of this other stuff happened in our lives that meant we weren't able to be completely like um present in it and um and that was just really heartbreaking because it was something that I'd always dreamed of and I always thought would fix our problems, but it ended up just just illuminating all of them. And so um, the, yeah, the writing process for Heaven, I think, was um, more spiritual for sure for me. The way that I saw it, Dilly Dally, has always been a lot about the image and um, I know that you guys got tattoos that said Dilly Dally, like before you had even um, had made songs yet, you enlisted. And so I'm interested in this idea of how your image changed. Like, I think you have a new logo um, for this record and whether it's like your white hair and your white guitar, how the idea of the image of your band played a role in making this record. Um, I, I never think about it like the image of the band. I think about it more of like creating a fantasy world of like of escapism and of like who like a superhero version of yourself or this dream version of yourself. And um, for Soar, it definitely felt like this reinvention as well from who I was in the past. And... Um, and I hope that our third album does the same. So, um, and you know, we're just, we just happen to have a heavy hand, um, in like a lot of, um, the visuals for this project. So like with me taking more uh, initiative, this campaign to like direct and stuff too. And, um, yeah, just, I don't know. I, I I have a lot of visions associated with the music that um or that I that I write and um there's a lot of like colors as well with those moods and feelings that I associate with them. So for heaven, yeah, it was a lot of light blues and whites and very like calming, like kind of hospital colors so we could all fix ourselves. I'd love to talk a little bit more about how you said um, you directed the I Feel Free video. Um, did you have a vision for that? And was that sort of therapeutic in the way that how you wanted to portray the band getting back together? Or sort of what was your intention behind that video and what was the process like for the band? Um, I feel like the process for me of just like coming up with the con concept and basically like writing, I guess like the script for that video, even though there wasn't, um, dialogue in it, um, that it was very much like the kind of how the story unfolds, that little story. Um, it came to me like, I don't know. It's so, it was just so similar as writing a song and, um, I think that has really helped me jump into a medium that I'm completely new at. Um, but also, like, we're we're still, like, an, you know, a small band on indie labels and um, I guess, like, music videos in general, like, they're not as, like, valued in the industry as they used to be. So we, like... I mean, I also just kind of end up directing because I would rather spend the budget on, like, a cute dress <laughs> and, like, and, like, um, having really good crew and cameras and gear and making it all happen. So that's that. I don't know. But, yeah, the, the creative process is similar as writing a song in a way. Um, going off that idea, would you say the reverse, like do uh, TV shows or films or other music videos ever help you to write songs? Um, 
nah. I'm never like, oh, I really, I saw this movie and I want to write a song about it. It's, I very much write songs from like some kind of feeling inside me. And um, every once in a while, the feeling that is inside me is worth sharing. And so it's just, it's just, you know, luck of the draw, what comes out of you that day. Um, so that's why it's important to like create space for yourself to, um, just put down your ideas, whatever kind of art you like to do or, or whatever you like to do with your life, I guess, just create time for yourself to work on your craft. I'd like to talk about your vocals in this new record. They're quite different from on the first record. Some people said that they're almost like experimental. How do you uh, how do you see your relationship with your vocals and how you're changing them or experimenting to make music and like portray those feelings? Vocals are my favorite thing for me. Um, I I've always just had so much fun discovering new parts of my voice and. Uh, at the time, like for writing Heaven, I remember like I felt so broken and so sad and like very tired of being angry. And I was also exploring my femininity for the first time since I was like a preteen or whenever I became a tomboy when I was like, I guess, yeah, like a preteen. So. I feel like in terms of exploring my femininity, I picked up where I left off, which was as a kid. And um, I think that's why there's something very like youthful and fragile to the vocals on Heaven because I was just exploring this part of myself that I always was actually ashamed of and felt like no one will listen to me if I show this kind of weakness or if I seem, like, too feminine. I thought people would listen to me more if I was more of a tomboy and I could still hang out with the guys and make jokes and everyone would laugh. And <laughs> I don't know. I guess that's a whole fucking tangent. And I'm probably not allowed to swear on the radio, so. I'm guessing that vocals have, like, always played a big role in your songwriting process. How did you get to where you are today? Uh, I sounded terrible for a long time. <laughs> and some people would probably still think I sound weird, but, um, but I'm really proud of the vocals on both records and um I'm super pumped to be able to say that like tonight at this show the vocals are gonna be what it sounds like on our recordings too and so um I don't know it's just a lot of practice and for better or for worse that's what I focus on the most in all of this is the vocals and almost creating these characters or finding these characters or people inside me that haven't um, been explored yet. I don't know. Yeah. So would you say that you have any like influences for vocals? I know um, I was watching the KEXP um, performance you guys did and they asked you about a record that you liked and you said like Sinead O'Connor. Who are your influences, and especially whether, like you said, you weren't trying to sound like women songwriters before, or like if you were combining different people? Like, what what do you think you were exposed to that kind of influenced you, or do you think that's like not at all relevant? Um, I think when I was uh, a teenager, um, a young teenager, I really romanticized. Uh, rock stars who had the raspy voices and there were like these fucked up artist guys and I always thought it would be really cool if 
a girl was able to portray that that like rock and roll like don't give a fuck and I'll go out and party and like <laughs> I always thought it would be a cool really cool if a girl did it and wanted to prove to everybody that you could still do it and like be attractive and like desired and um I don't know if I've proved that but uh I've also become less romantic about that like rock star image of um like kind of now to me it's almost like oh a lot of those people I looked up to were assholes and like like became junkies and like almost died or did die or like started making shitty music um so I guess once I stopped putting anyone on a pedestal, I was able to just explore my own stuff. So for um, Heaven, um, the record, Pitchfork said that like Marijuana was the most like heavenly song or where you got to it. I don't know if I would agree with that, but um, I've also read you say that like this record is if the band had gone to heaven and then come back and made a record. Uh, do you think that there's a song in your mind that that really gets at that point you want me to say what the most heavenly song on the record is well that's easy it's heaven the song called heaven is the most heavenly moment because it's the happiest song and it's a love song and it's the only love song on that record um yeah and it's just about how, like, it doesn't matter how fucked up things can get, how dark things can get. Well, it, it does matter, but don't worry because when things get really dark outside, it might make you closer with the people who you love. Dun, dun, dun. Do you think that your whole, like... <laughs> idea with spirituality sort of changed with writing this record i mean heaven's like a big loaded word yeah i mean um i don't know if people like caught on to the i remember i said to the band oh my god do you think people are gonna think we're christian because we called it heaven <laughs> and i started i would get like cold feet sometimes because it's a little bit like tongue in cheek or like almost like me trying to reclaim these words because um I grew up being terrified of religion uh because my parents are from Ireland and uh they had bad experiences with the Catholic Church so I I grew up being pretty scared of the whole concept but then also not knowing how to express my own spirituality because I think um, that that's something that totally exists without organized religion. Um, and without ha knowing how to express it on this album, Heaven, I very much like reached for almost like the most closest and cliche um kind of spiritual words and language that I could think of and tried to piece it all together in some kind of entanglement that represented um, like my spirituality and my individual spirituality. Uh, so I tried to like create like a thing for people who feel lost and hopefully can find some solace in it. How do you feel starting the tour in Montreal? Or what's the band's sort of relationship with Montreal? Our relationship with Montreal is great. Because, um, I don't know, we just like, we've, we've always enjoyed playing here. And 
for some reason, like we haven't toured Canada, excuse me, very much at all. Um, you know, we played like Toronto for six years and then we got signed and started touring the whole world. So it's really nice to come back to Montreal and nurture places like this where I know we do have a lot of fans and, um, and then just like personally, like we've always had like lots of close friends here. Tony and I both like went to and then dropped out of school here in this town and like, um, and yeah, it's, it's, uh, it was, I don't know. It reminds me a little bit of being 18 and getting wasted. Sorry. I shouldn't say that. Cause isn't, isn't that like the worst people here? Isn't that who everyone hates? I shouldn't ask you either. <laughs> No, I think I I think I was uh alluding to like the tension between like francophone and anglophone people here and the new like young English speaking students who get wasted and walk in front of bikes and cars and um you know, I don't know. But I I I it's not very fresh in my mind, so I shouldn't be speaking to it. Everyone who's listening knows way more about that than me, so I don't know. I'm from Toronto. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for talking to us. We're really excited for the show tonight and Yay. whatever else Dilly Dolly gets up to. <laughs>